MASH was one of the all-time classic TV shows. Its brilliant combination of the drama of wartime medicine with amazing comedy left viewers always wanting more. This was no better exhibited than in the success of the MASH finale, which still remains the most-watched scripted TV episode in U.S. history. Clearly, the fans wanted to see more. But by then, the powers that be had decided it was time to end things, so fans had to hope for a spin-off or two as consolation. And that's what they got. However, the two spin-offs of MASH ended up being pretty big failures. In this video, we're taking a look at these two MASH spin-offs and why they didn't work. Join us as Facts First presents The MASH Spin-offs Left Fans Wanting Something Way Different. After MASH The primary spin-off people talk about when it comes to MASH is After MASH. Some have argued it was a continuation, others have said it was a sequel, while others maintain its status as a spin-off. Regardless, it was a 30-minute sitcom that aired on NBC after MASH ended. And while at first it looked like it was going to be incredibly successful, it ended up being a bit of a dud. After MASH aired 30 episodes in total over two seasons. Technically, they made a 31st, but it didn't air. As the original show was wrapping up, and as rumors about the powerhouse finale were churning, the powers that be decided to look into getting a spin-off going as soon as possible. They settled on the idea that the show would be set in the U.S. at a veterans hospital. It would feature Harry Morgan as Sherman Potter, Jamie Farr as Maxwell Klinger, and William Christopher as Father Mulcahy. This was likely because those were the three cast members from the original who were apparently most in favor of keeping it going for its abbreviated 11th season. So the producers knew the three actors were interested in continuing in the world of M.A.S.H. at the very least. The problem they faced was that other primary cast members had turned down any notion of joining a spin-off series. CBS and 20th Century Fox, the network and production company for the original, approached Larry Gelbart about rejoining the team to showrun the new series. Gelbart had created the original, but left after season four. And considering he had not been having success in the meantime, he was eager to try his hand at a new M.A.S.H. spin-off. He was joined by several other creatives who'd been involved with the original show, including Burt Metcalf, David Isaacs, Dennis Koenig, and Ken Levine. Together, they quickly crafted 10 of the first 13 scripts, and CBS started casting. In addition to the three actors we mentioned, After MASH also brought back Rosalind Chow, who had played Klinger's wife Soon Yi in the original. And they also brought in a slew of new talent like Barbara Townsend, Brandis Kemp, John Chappell, and J.O. Sanders. An article from 1983 also stated that the $500,000 price tag per episode made it the highest costing 30-minute sitcom to date. It was a hit at first. After MASH had a huge built-in fan base when it started. Not only had millions of people watched and loved MASH over the years, but it ramped up into the record-breaking finale. So expectations were reasonably high for the beginning of After MASH, and that prediction came true. The first season of After MASH got an average 20.1 Nielsen rating, which is huge. For all scripted network shows, it was the 11th highest rated of the year in 1983-84. to And of the new shows that year, only the show Hotel bested it in ratings. So it seemed like things were off and running, and CBS had another juggernaut on their hands. This video is brought to you by Established Titles. Have you ever been interested in being a lord or a lady? With Established Titles, now you can become one. For real. You could officially change your name to Lord or Lady and get it on your credit card, plane tickets, etc. You can even get it on your dating profiles. You can purchase title packs that give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland. With the purchase, you'll receive an official certificate with a crest. Your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. Established Titles told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our little facts first kingdom. They plant a tree with every order and work with global charities, one tree planted, and trees for the future to support global reforestation efforts. It makes an amazing last minute gift. Established Titles is actually running an early Black Friday sale. Plus, if you use the code FV10, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash FV10 to get your gifts now and help support the channel. The Failure of Season 2 Season 2 started off well for After MASH, using its slot before the Emmy Awards on September 23, 1984, to get excellent ratings. 
This was despite several major changes CBS had made. To start with, they tried to use their show to counter-program against the super successful show The A-Team on NBC. So Aftermash began to air at the same time, Tuesdays at 8, as The A-Team. This proved a bad move, as people clearly preferred The A-Team. CBS also decided to recast several parts. They swapped out Barbara Townsend with Ann Petoniak to play Mildred Potter, and John Chappell was replaced with Peter Michael Getz. These changes were an attempt to recreate the general kookiness of the original show, as they felt the current cast didn't have that going for them. In this vein, they also had Jamie Farr's character, Klinger, start cross-dressing again. Plus, they reintroduced Edgar Winter as Colonel Flagg. But after the season premiere, when the show started back at its new Tuesday slot, people just stopped tuning in. Ratings plummeted, and before long, Aftermash had slipped all the way down to 66th in the ratings. CBS quickly pulled the plug, canceling it on October 24th, 1984. It was the first show they canceled that season. Farr and Morgan's Popularity What's interesting to note is that not even the immense popularity of Jamie Farr and Harry Morgan could save Aftermash. And this was in spite of the fact they were both on the list of the top 10 most popular actors on TV in that era. 1983's Q scores, which have for years been the go-to measure for how much certain celebs are liked or disliked, had Jamie Farr as the 10th most liked celeb and Harry Morgan at number 2. So you'd think that would have kept Aftermash going for at least a few seasons. Of course, it should be mentioned that number one on the list was their former MASH co-star, Alan Alda. So perhaps the fact that the biggest star on TV was now missing from the new show made the fact that it had two other top 10 stars somewhat moot. Audiences couldn't get on board long term with a MASH show without Alda. The other spinoff. If After MASH was an unsuccessful MASH spinoff, then Walter was a downright disaster. But let's back up for a moment. Fans of MASH will certainly remember the fantastic character of Corporal Radar O'Reilly, played wonderfully by Gary Berghoff. His incredible hearing and innate sense of when a commanding officer was approaching was what earned the character the nickname of Radar. And Berghoff's naturally boyish looks are part of what earned him the role. Despite being nearly 30 when he was cast, he played the 18-year-old Radar adeptly and was a fan favorite. His uplifting and optimistic vibe played in nice contrast to some of the more pessimistic characters rounding out the show. But the taxing nature of the shooting schedule, as well as being away from his family for long periods, eventually got to Berghoff. As such, he decided to leave the show during the eighth season. The show even incorporated his struggles into the plot and had Radar return to his family farm on a hardship discharge. Berghoff was also notable for being the only person to be in both the original movie of MASH as well as the show, and CBS knew he was always going to be a favorite in the hearts of fans. So they brought him back for some episodes of After MASH, with the notion that he would then use that return to pivot to his own show. So he returned briefly as a guest star on After MASH, and then production began on a show called Walter. In it, Radar became a police officer. Before the show, however, the producers decided to film and test it out as a TV movie. They assumed ratings would be good, and then they could quickly move on to the show. Unfortunately, the TV movie bombed in the ratings. That made the possibility for Walter's success pretty slim. Still, they pressed on, trying to get the show going. They filmed a pilot, but by then, the ship had sailed and the show wasn't picked up. MASH was one of the best shows in history. It was watched and adored by millions, and the acting, writing, and production were all superb. It was truly ahead of its time, and the power of the characters made it so that many of them are etched in TV history. So it would have made a lot of sense if spin-offs of MASH had ended up being major hits for years. After all, even a show featuring a couple of the characters would still feature actors and roles that were beloved. Yet the world of TV ratings is a fickle beast. It's hard to tell why people stop watching certain shows. It's also easy to see that sometimes networks tinker with a good product too much, hoping for a little ratings boost, only to find out their meddling only made things worse. Such seems to be the case with Aftermash. After seemingly having a good thing going, CBS got greedy. They assumed putting it against the A-team would yield results, but to no avail. The same can't be said for Walter, which seems to just have been in a position where it was never going to succeed. Perhaps the characters had just run their course by that point. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you watch Aftermash? What did you think? Let us know in the comments section below.